Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic we should all focus on doing well, branding. First, let me take a quick step back and put on my honest pants. I am not a marketer. I took a few marketing classes in school, but I am in no way a marketing guru or strategist. And for those folks at home that are thinking to themselves, marketing is easy, post a few things online, let it go viral, etc., etc. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that is not how it works. But why branding? Why is branding important to an entrepreneur? Branding, by definition, is the action of marking with a branded iron. Okay, not that kind of branding, but the promotion of a particular product or company by means of advertising and distinctive design kind of branding. For this show, we're going to focus on the second definition, which aligns with the American Marketing Association definition that a brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or any other feature that identifies one seller's good or services as distinct from the other sellers. Like a swoosh, like the three stripes, those are branded logos. Branding is like an idea or an image that comes to mind when thinking of a specific product, service, or company. Either practical, example given, these jeans feel good, or emotional, example given, these jeans make me look good. Therefore, according to the Branding Journal, this combination of physical and emotional cues is triggered when exposed to the name, the logo, the visual identity, or even the message communicated by the brand. Take Nike and Adidas, for example. Both are shoe brands. Both make athletic apparel. They sponsor social justice missions, etc., etc. But you would not catch me dead in anything Adidas. Why? Simply because of the Nike brand. Swoosh for life, baby. And the same goes for almost any brand. Coke versus Pepsi, Ford versus Chevy, the Raiders versus the NFL. A brand gives meaning to a specific organization, company, product, or service. So how do you create a brand? Well, I can tell you from my experience, it is not easy, but there are tools to help. Brand position statements, pricing strategy, product and package design, a slogan, For example, the Shades of Entrepreneurship is trademark. This is the brand. The brand's purpose, promise, and values are to help to promote our local entrepreneurs, educate, inspire future entrepreneurs, and support our communities. That is the brand I am aiming to create. Starting a clothing line garage down in Banks? Let's chat. Designing garden rocks out in Elkton? Come on the show. Brewing hot dog flavored water out in Burns? I want to talk to you. Honestly, that sounds crazy and a bit unhealthy, but I'll take a case of it. In short, brands appeal to individuals' emotions by making them feel connected to a brand's mission, vision, and values. And in the end, people want to feel cared for and about. And in this time, brands take advantage of creating a brand consumers can relate to. Welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. guests are longtime freelancers, educators, and partners with a passion for art and design, community, and marketing. With an approachable marketing and design experience to small businesses and nonprofits everywhere, please welcome the co-founders of Modern Ally, Ryan Negrini and Cassidy Campbell. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. I'm here today with my sponsors. I'm here with the owners of Modern Ally. Cassidy, Ryan, what's going on? Hello. How's it going, Gabe? God, thank you guys so much. First, uh, one, for helping sponsor this podcast and, and being part of this uh, growth movement right now. And two, I really want to kind of hear about you guys. Let's 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 talk about who is Cassidy and Ryan? Who is Modern Ally? What do you guys do? Do you want to go? <laughs> sure. Um, well, 
My name is Ryan Negrini. Um, and, uh, really I, I got my start in, uh, in, in marketing as a freelance writer. Um, really, I think I got my first few gigs off Craigslist at age 17 and, um, and really just sort of snowballed from there. Um, I, uh, got a creative writing degree from, um, University of Central Florida and, um, worked my way through a couple different, um, marketing positions, uh, education positions, uh, until I got out to Colorado where I worked for, um, Colorado early colleges as their director of marketing. So it was a nice little hybrid of, of both worlds there. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit bigger. Um, and that's when I met Cassidy and, you know, we, moved into Modern Ally, which was just... Yeah, so I guess for me, mm-hmm. um, I I kind of jumped around for, like, education. I did, like, six or seven different majors, graphic design, painting and drawing, sculpture, interior design. I was also in education as a media trainer at a university in Tennessee, and then um, I was helping develop our uh, media and design program at the same early college, um, that Ryan was the director of marketing at, which is again, where we met. Um, and there, you know, we sort of scripted and shot and edited, um, videos and promotions together. We handled social media. Um, we put on events like a Ted talk and stuff. Um, and then COVID hit, and we were like, man, what are we going to do with our lives? Mm, yeah. And we don't want to be in Colorado anymore. <laughs> um, I think we both had a, a West Coast trajectory in general. I started in Florida. She started in Tennessee and you know, just sort of progressed from there. Yeah. So actually, the way Modern Alley started is we visited our family in Florida right before COVID hit. And we were just sort of like joking around and we're like, ha ha ha. What if we started our own business? Yeah. So we didn't have to work for other people. (laughs) Uh, well, surprise, surprise, here we are. Uh, one joke later. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) We, uh, set up our website and our license and everything the week before COVID hit. Wow. Wow. And so, so why did you guys uh, begin to transition over to Oregon? You mentioned kind of earlier, the West Coast kind of was on your radar for a while. Why Oregon in particular? We actually had a whole road trip plan to visit tons of cities in the Midwest, Northeast, Southeast. I, I love the Southeast. Um, and then Portland was our West Coast stop. And Portland was our first stop on our road trip. And after we visited Portland, we were like, we don't need to go anywhere else. <laughs> we're just going to move to Portland. And then we moved here a month later. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. So let's let's talk about Modern Ally. And let's talk about a little bit. what What is Modern Ally? For the, for the guests that are listening, what is Modern Ally and what does it do? Modern Ally is sort of a one-stop shop for small businesses, local businesses, and nonprofits. Um, we we do graphic design, we do branding packages, we do logos, we do website design, we do SEO and blogging, um, we do PR and networking. We really do everything that a small business or nonprofit or any any entity needs to get going. Um, social media branding and setup, etc. Yeah, I mean, digital marketing and graphic design is is probably the best way to sum it up. And um, you know, I think part of the reason we started Modern Ally was because we wanted to kind of have this focal point around do good organizations and small businesses that um, you know, like Cassidy said, are just getting started, or you know, they they don't need this um, distant robust, um, corporate agency to, to support their, their efforts. They want somebody that they can kind of connect with. Um, and, and that's what, what our focus was. Um, and obviously the, the ally in, in modern ally, uh, really started as a, a focus on social rights, um, LGBTQIA rights. And especially, um, especially with, you know, all of the political movements that were happening in 2020 before the election. Um, obviously those really stuck with us. And so we just sort of ran with that concept, you know, it started out with LGBTQIA plus, and then sort of went on to minorities. And then we were just like, well, what if we just focus on all do good, like community, local business, like the places where it's going to make an impact, you know, not big businesses. 
we do have a few bigger businesses, but we really mm-hmm. try and focus on local and small business and nonprofit. So is, is that kind of the problem that you kind of set out to solve was, was to kind of help support the underserved? A hundred percent. You know, a lot of marketing agencies, they really over charge, you know, everyone has different price points that they need to stick around, which is totally fair. Um, but you know, we are like, we can offer professional services to these people who are so stressed out. They don't have time to do it. And their business is suffering because of it when they could be getting a lot more traction. We were like, we could step in, do it at a, the right budget for them, um, and help their businesses succeed. And then in turn, help our community and members of our community succeed. Nice. Now, how, how does one start a graphic design? I'm, I'm assuming it's not as easy just going to like, you know, paint shop and just kind of creating a logo. <laughs> you know? So so how does how does one start it? Like what what process did you guys have to go through to kind of create your business? Well, I think we we both had a good background um, in sort of ourselves as as a business um, in the sense that, you know, we were, we were both freelancers. Um, and so we, we were comfortable, you know, working with new clients and onboarding people and, you know, um, educating them on what exactly we were doing and some of the different things that they might need in order to be successful. And I think, um, you know, one of the, the first steps that we, we took was, you know, putting together our own website. Um, and, you know, I think, I think that sort of, helps build the brand and the identity uh, a little bit, um, forces you to pick out colors, to, to design a logo, to, um, you know, think about, really think about your services and, and what your offerings are, who your target audience is, you know, um, in my mind, the website is sort of, you know, that, I mean, that's your digital hub. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. that's, you know, that's who you are. That's the first thing that you need in order to be a business. Yeah. And that's not, you're registered yet or whatever. You need a website in order to start your social. You need a website in order, you know, for people to take you seriously and really know what you're about. Yeah. And that's, I would admit that's one of the first things I did with the podcast, right. Was, was start the shades of E.com mm-hmm. hint, hint, you know, folks, if you want to visit that shades of <laughs> uh, and that, that's kind of where I started, but you know, also, you know, getting the LLC for me was important, right? To kind of, you know, save, save my butt on the, on the backside. Now, are, are you guys the LLC? Are you S Corp, C Corp? We are an LLC. Um, we didn't really, you know, when we started out, we're not business people. We're marketing and design and media people. <laughs> and artists at heart. Yeah. I, I would argue. Huh? I like it. <laughs> They're like, I, I don't, how do we start a business? Are we going to get in trouble if we do something wrong? Yeah, totally. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> which, which you can. Right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> For sure. Of For course. Sure. Um, and so, you know, we started talking to some other business owners, some family members who own businesses. And we were like, oh, we need an LLC or yeah. else people can come after us. <laughs> yeah, that, that's very true. A limited liability company is very important or anything to kind of protect yourself. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we just started out with the idea, well, the joke, and then the idea, (laughs) the website, the LLC. And then of course you have to get your business banking account and your QuickBooks and everything like that set up to stay organized from the beginning. Yep. So, so with that, how did you guys fund, um, modern ally? Did you bootstrap it? Did you guys venture capital route? How'd you guys do it? Yeah. Bootstrap all the way. Um, you know, really the majority of what we needed to, get our business off the ground. We, we already knew how to do, and, um, we were already prepared to do it for other people. Um, and so, you know, really we, we did it on our own dime and, you know, got our own, um, our, our own funds into the, into the pot. And, nice. you know, I think that's a, a good, a good way to approach it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just paid for it with our education jobs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what you go to school for, right? Yeah. You go to school. <laughs> So, yeah. so let's, let's kind of, kind of talk about, I, I, so I think there's a misconception in, in, in particular for me, I think I, I, I was very much in a realization is like making a logo and these things are hard, right? Yes. What are, what are some of the processes that you kind of go through to get to that end point? Well, so do you want to talk about a logo or do you want to talk about a website? Cause I can walk you through steps for, both. Oh, you know what, let's, let's go with the website. Cause I think that might okay. be applicable to some of our guests right now. Right? Okay. Perfect. So for a website, um, for a lot of our clients, um, when we start out with a website, they have no idea what they're doing, which is perfectly fine. That's why they hire someone. She's talking about me again. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
So, you know, first we walk them through how to get their domain. Then we walk them through which is going to be the best platform for you to host your website on. You know, typically we work with Wix or Squarespace or WordPress because that's really all a small business needs. And it's easily accessible if they want to make edits or if we need to make edits down the road for them. Um, So after we decide on all that, you know, we talk about, okay, what imagery do you want on it? Do you need us to come in and take professional photos for you? Do you need product photography? Do you already have photos? Do you have content written up? And then we sort of go through, we plan your navigation, um, we plan your branding. So, you know, colors, formatting, accessibility, that sort of thing. Anything that really needs to be implemented on your site in order to reach your target audience. Nice. Um, And then we get all of these assets together. We do copyright editing. You know, we do SEO, um, just trying to evaluate like internal, external links, alt text. So for the folks at home, what what is SEO? SEO is search engine optimization. Yeah, uh, I can chime in there. Yeah. Um, Yeah. SEO is, is primarily dealing with how a search engine, Google usually, um, is reading your site and ranking it um, in a search engine. Yeah. And there are all sorts of things that affect it that people I don't really think, think about like literally like your description of photos having a hundred percent, having a certain amount of internal and external links and different types of media that aren't just yours, you know, going in and out from your site, blogs, which are super important. We always recommend doing blogs to our clients at least one or two a month. Wow. I'm falling behind greatly. (laughs) (laughs) It's that regularly updated content. I'm telling you. Well, and and, and that's another piece. I think, you know, I've, I'm, I've been doing the small business for a while, um, running this podcast as well. It's, it's a lot of work, you know, and I think, uh, you know, we've been working on, on doing the editing in the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I think there's just a lot of big misconceptions that when you're going and doing these processes, it's, it's, it takes some time. And it's a lot of, it's very, uh, very, very like micromanaging things too. <laughs> hundred like. percent. Yeah. And so like we try and take all of the stress that business owners feel when they're having to set up social media or their website or trying to keep up with blogs yep. or video or audio editing or whatever. We're like, focus on your business. Let us do that for you. You don't need to do that. You need to focus on your business and your customers. Let us run that for you. How, so one thing you mentioned too, in the beginning, you, you were, it kind of started from a joke in, in Florida, right? But you yeah. were living in Denver and then you moved to Portland. So, <laughs> so how did, how did you gain clientele? How did you market yourself into a whole new state after you moved? I think it was a mix of things. Um, I will say Cassidy is much better at networking than I am. Um, but you know, that has been, you know, a significant part of our, our process is really building relationships with people. Um, whether that's just, you know, us being their customer and coming in with a a card and saying, Hey, like, I really like what you're doing here. You know, if you're interested, check us out. We can help with a couple things. Um, you know, we have people that we've networked with over the years as well that, you know, we tune into, um, but you know, just digital marketing on our own side, um, has been really valuable as well. Uh, things like different Facebook groups and, um, you know, we've done a couple ads here and there, um, you know, just really putting ourselves out there. Yeah. We've also done some like direct contact stuff. Um, like when we were in Colorado, we specifically reached out to like a lot of nonprofits and mental health professionals and stuff and got a few clients that way. Just by, I think that was how we got our first client. Um, we were looking at clients we really wanted to work with and support. Mm -hmm. Um, like, like one Colorado is a great LGBTQIA, um, education resource for youth. They were one of our very first clients. Um, you know, we were just like, man, um, you know, we would love to get involved with you guys. We would love to work on your like political action campaigns. We support what you do. We love what you guys do. And they were like, yeah, like, let's do it. And I was like, okay, let's do it. (laughs) And, I, you know, it's kind of funny you mentioned networking and that's exactly how we met. Right. And you mentioned the Facebook groups. Right. I, I oh, will yeah. be complete transparent. I to my uh, un- inability to edit, I, I reached out to a Facebook group of podcasters and like, hey, does anybody know how to edit a podcast? And Cassidy responded. And that's that's how we connected. How important has networking been to your business? Oh, my gosh. If we hadn't if we hadn't done networking, we would probably have the same 
some of the same three clients that we started out with and we wouldn't have gotten any. <laughs> like we, we, we don't do a lot of, um, right now we haven't been doing a lot of advertising. No, we've just been we doing, haven't. yeah, we've just been doing networking. And I, yeah. I, I would say that we would be doing a lot more cold emailing, uh, which is what we did back in the day, uh, back in the day, like, in 2020. Year and a half ago. <laughs> Man, the pandemic definitely yeah. makes things feel like a it lot does. of things are back in the day, right? It does. So what 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 was something, you know, as you're beginning to move your your business, you're now established here in Oregon. What are some of the things that have surprised you about running the business and being your own business owner? Um, that our business worked and that it's growing. <laughs> Really? <laughs> well, yeah. Like we said, we started it out as a joke, you know, yeah. we were just like, oh yeah, like we could make some extra money on the side, you know, and then it yeah. turned into like a, a full thing. But I, I think even, I think even beyond the joke, you know, is starting out, it's like, okay, like, is this going to work? Yeah. Like, you know, sh- you know, sure. We got our website together, you know, we invested a little bit of money, yeah. but you know, now we have to get clients, yeah. you know, and that's sort of the, the scary part. And you don't know if, if it's going to work or not. Yeah, especially starting up the week before COVID, like shut down the country. We were yeah. like, well, who knows? Like, we'll just keep doing what we're doing and see if it works. But, you know, I, I think that aside from that, um, I think it's been really surprising, like how many amazing clients that we've gotten to work with and like support, especially, you know, local, local clients in Portland yeah. and then like politically oriented clients that are really working to make an impact. Um, it's been just awesome to actually get clients like that and have the opportunity to work with them. Yeah. What what was, what was that kind of moment for you guys where you were like, you know, this, this is doable. We're, we can make a career out of this. Was that, where was that moment for you guys? I think that that's right now. Honestly. Really? Yeah. We're in that, we're in that crux. We're in that peak. I I would agree. Yeah. It's, it's the, the snowball of, you know, finishing a project, having a happy client, uh, maybe they want to keep going with things or, you know, we get a, a new client that has t- talked to a, our old client um, and, and they're networking and talking about us. Um, and so, you know, we have one after another f- of people reaching out and, um, you know, the Portland area specifically has, has really embraced us. Um, and I think that's, you know, has something to do with our message, but you know, also to do with the, the community out here. Definitely. Um, so yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, I gotta admit, you know, you and I, we've, you know, Cassie, we've met what maybe a month or two ago or something like that. And we've already been doing a lot of work together, oh, yeah. a lot of work and, oh, yeah. and, and connecting a lot of people, <laughs> um, you know, and doing a lot of great work in the community as well. And, and, you know, that's really important. Um, but, I would say, you know, how do you, one of the things you mentioned is your clients, how, how do you get new clients? Like how you mentioned the networking piece, right? And you mentioned you formally doing the emails, but you, you, now you're mentioning, you know, finishing these projects. How do you continue to kind of bring on new, new work, new projects? Well, so I would say a large chunk of our clients are actually reoccurring monthly clients, which is awesome because then we get to like build a relationship with them in our work and like really get to know their brand and support them even better, like months down the road. Um, And so that's a big chunk of what we do when we onboard one client. Typically that client is like they're there for the long haul. Yeah. Um, You know, whether that's social media, regular blogging, um, website maintenance, uh, podcast editing or video editing, you know? Um, so, you know, most of our clients are monthly and then we have a few one-off projects that we do here and there. Um, but yeah, even those one-off projects, oftentimes, um, you know, we'll finish them up and, you know, maybe it's a a month or two, but, um, you know, they'll come back and say, Hey, we have this other project. Um, or Hey, like, you know, we're thinking about bringing you guys on for social media now just month to month. Um, and so, you know, I think one of our, um, strengths has been building those lasting, you know, um, relationships. Yeah. You know, we, it's, it's awesome to be able to be like, okay, buy like this package of social media and post it yourself, you yeah, know? Yeah. but it's even more awesome to be able to work with the client long term and work on building their brand and their services and their clientele and just like see them grow and grow with them. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. How, what kind of services should your clients kind of expect um, to see out of modern LA? How, how do you work with them? 
Um, you mean as far as, uh, so like, as far as like all the services that you're able to provide, how do you kind of work with them? So for example, um, Cassidy was mentioning this, here's just a box, just go with this box. But you, I feel like you guys have more of a, a touch, right? You, where oh, you're yeah. very much kind of ingrained with your, with your clients. How do you guys kind of work with your clients and to kind of help support them? Do you guys have monthly weekly meetings? Like how do you kind of keep engaged with your, especially those clients that are doing two blogs a month? Right. So it totally depends on the client because, you know, our whole thing is that we work with businesses specifically to create a customized priced out package with specific services that are going to work for their business. Mm -hmm. So everything is a little bit different per client. There are some clients that we meet with once a month. There are some clients I meet with once every week and a half. You know, um, I will say that the clients who um, struggle a little bit more with technology, we, we meet up with more regularly yeah, um, just to, you know, keep things going smoothly. Um, but, you know, we do a lot of everything um, just online with like Google Drive and video chats and emails. Um, you know, we, we have a we have a special drive for all of our clients to share content with us back and forth. Nice. Um, so that's been great. And then as far as blogging. Um, typically Ryan writes the blog and then yeah. we send it, we work on edits together and then we post it. And then you got clients like me who harass you 24 <laughs> seven. I wouldn't say that. Yeah, it comes with the territory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, you know, what is one thing now you started your business and you guys have been growing, you guys are here in Oregon. What is one thing you wish you knew about business that you didn't know before you started modern ally? Me. <laughs> yeah. You, you. Um, you know my answer. Yeah. Um, I, oh man, something. Okay. Two things, I guess. One thing is that when I was in college, I thought my degree was going to matter so much. And that's why I switched between majors six or seven times. Cause I was like, Oh, this major isn't professional enough or I'm not learning enough technical skills in this. One. It doesn't matter. I, I ended up being in a creative spot either way with I would, and I would have with any of the degrees that I was trying to pursue in college. The second thing that I wish I had known before I, you know, I, I sort of handle a lot of the accounting stuff on my end. Um, I would have gotten an accountant right away, right away. Yeah. I, I hate, I hate dealing with the numbers. Yes. <laughs> That's why I love my wife so much. She, she, she helps me out. Yes. <laughs> it's, you're very lucky. Yes. I'm very lucky. Wife. I love you. Thank you for making me very lucky in doing my finances. <laughs> so Ryan, what about you? Um, you know, for me, I might say almost the opposite of Cassidy's first point. <laughs> um, you know, I went to school for, for creative writing and, um, you know, I had authorial pursuits, um, and I, I got really good at writing and I, I enjoy writing as well. Um, but I do wish that I had thought about how my degree or the skills that I was learning in college specifically would translate into the real world a little bit more. Mm, yeah. um, and, you know, that's just part of my personal journey. And um, I've compensated for it over the years by, you know, doing online courses and, and ultimately teaching myself um, all the skills in my trade. Um, but, you know, I think that would be something that I would recommend to, to, any young entrepreneurs out there is to really think about what is, what is that handful of skills that you can dedicate yourself to and really use out in the field? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a great point. Disclaimer. Um, art degrees are different than writing and marketing degrees. <laughs> I think we're going to have a little bit of a cat fight here on this show. <laughs> oh, no, no, I mean, in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. Oh man, that's great. Well, you, you know, Ryan, you, you kind of started talking about advice, you know, the younger entrepreneurs, what, what advice would you kind of give to the younger entrepreneurs, but uh, on younger entrepreneurs, but more importantly, what advice would you give to your younger selves? I think that for me, I would say, don't be afraid to ask questions. You're not going to look like an idiot. You're just going to look like you're trying to learn something that you don't know anything about. And like specifically, I was super crazy, like 
technology illiterate when I started college because I grew up with my grandparents. <laughs> um, and so I was like crazy intimidated by all of this like design and like 3D modeling and like production software that all of my peers were using. And I, I waited so long to get on board and on track with, you know, technology and you know, here we are. Yeah. Um, so just like going for things and not thinking that you're not going to be good at it or that it's overwhelming, just going for it, asking questions, experiencing things, just do it. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. And, and I hate to piggyback, but I would a hundred percent agree. I think, you know, number one, uh, I would encourage myself to learn several more tangential skills early on. Um, but then to really put myself out there and, uh, apply those in a way that maybe was a little bit scary, but also, um, led to more fruitful outcomes. Um, you know, low risk, low reward. Um, but if you take that chance, then, you know, yeah, it is a great point. I mean, I look at this podcast when I first started, I, I, I was, a little nervous. And I, I got to admit my, my first guest was the one that kind of, he was the crux that kind of pushed it over. Cause he kind of came in, he's like, all right, well, let's do this. And I was like, what? We're, I guess we're doing this. And <laughs> we did it. And here we are, you know, uh, months later and, and several, you know, thousand downloads and we're, we're and several guests later. and several guests. Yeah. And we, and now we got a sponsor. I mean, my goodness, Look at you go. We're going. <laughs> we're going together, right? We've, we've been meeting, growing we've together. We've been growing together. Yes. That's yes. what we're we talking about constantly. <laughs> so how can how can people at home get in contact with you? Where can they find you on social media? Give, give us the spiel. They can find us with the handle uh, Modern Ally on Instagram or Facebook and also LinkedIn, actually. Um, or you can head to our website, which is yourmodernally.com. And to get in contact with us, just fill out our contact form and we'll get back to you super soon. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, Modern Ally. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.